Hi everyone, and welcome to the second ever CARC tutorial video. This video continues from where we left the first one, after setting up our first key. We're now in the Key tab, looking at a lot of parameters. We don't need to go into all of these now, but a few need mentioning, as you will probably use them every single time, and it's best to understand exactly what they are doing. First of all, at the core of CARC is a difference key algorithm. In essence, this means that it's based on subtracting the color channels that aren't the key color from the one that is. So in this case, we're subtracting red and blue from green to get our mat. This is where these weight sliders come in. These determine how much red and blue is being subtracted. More means a more solid mat, but less transparent detail, and less means more transparent detail, but a less solid mat. Keying in CUC is finding a good middle ground between the two. Often, though, you'll find that leaving these sliders where they are by default works just fine. Screen subtraction is a very important one. This determines how the mat is being used to get rid of the green screen. With screen subtraction on, the clean plate is subtracted from the footage using the mat, and with it off, the footage is multiplied by the mat. Both have advantages and disadvantages. Screen subtraction gives you really nice edges, but can result in too much spill suppression and not using screen subtraction is sometimes more predictable, but you will have to deal with a lot of leftover green in the edges. Kirk 3's new despill functionality makes this a lot easier than it used to be though. Luminance compensation is also new to Kirk 3. In either method I just described, you can get darkening of your footage when pulling a key, especially in transparent areas and edges. Luminance compensation restores the luminance in these areas. It can also be useful when compositing on backgrounds that are as bright as your backing screen. Bring back transparent detail is perhaps my personal favorite feature of CUC. Internally, this is an additional additive key that can separate out detail that's too subtle for creating an alpha channel with, but not subtle enough to let it go to waste. This feature generates negative values, which are in fact very useful when the background you are compositing on has room to accommodate them. If not, the threshold slider can help you manage them precisely. Matte detail performs a screen gain on the clean plate before doing the key. As you can see, this results in shrinking the range of the resulting mat. Cleanup is internally similar, but uses a custom curve to do a correction on the clean plate before keying. Be careful with this one. It can sometimes save your key from noise that's hard to get rid of, but can also be unpredictable and really destroy your edges. The other parameters here are quite straightforward and allow you to adjust your map further. Now for adjusting our key. You can see that there are a couple of issues here. The first is that there are a couple of holes in our mat. We know from looking at our footage that these are caused by very bright areas in the image. This can happen especially with light sources or reflective surfaces. You might have noticed that we can fix this with our weight sliders, but perhaps this messes with our edges. So in this case we want to do that differently. This is where Luma Matfill comes in. This is yet another keyer embedded in CUC, this time a luminance keyer. When we look at the Luma mat, we see that the areas where the holes are have a solid mat. By simply clicking on the Luma Matfill button, we can add this mat to our existing one and solve our problem. A second issue is a couple of leftover spots from the green screen. For this we'll need a garbage mat. When I turn on the garbage mat parameter here, what happens by default is that the screen selection, which is the pink area we talked about in the previous video, is now being used as a garbage mat. However, we can also see that the screen selection does not include these two spots. I can shrink or expand the garbage mat using this slider, but that doesn't help us either. So we'll do a little bit of roto. I'll create a quick polygon mask, like this, and connect it to the mat's input of CUC. Now I can add that mask to the garbage mat by simply selecting the proper channel in the garbage mat drop-down menu. 
I can also choose to replace the garbage mat altogether. But do note that the shrinking and expanding does not affect an external mat. Or multiply the eternal one by the external one. This little button inverts the external mat. There, this is our second issue solved. Our key is really coming together now. In the next video, we'll go over spill suppression and combining the key with a background.